Howdy folks. Let's now go over working with inputs. There's a few different inputs you'll come across while testing. Common ones are going to be a checkbox, a drop down, a text, a text area, a radio button, and so forth. And what we need to do is we need to be able to set those values, get the values, um, click it to, ch to make to set a checkbox to checked, select the drop down. We need to maybe clear those values and different things. So let's go over that now. We're first going to look at checkboxes. So let's go over to our test site to find checkboxes here. And let's just let's just click this checkbox and see if it is checked after we get it. All right, so we have we can target it by ch type of check checkboxes. There's actually two. So if we want to get this first one, we can use uh, use the CSS selector or pseudo selector of nth child. So let's do that. So this is new to you guys. Let's do type equal check box and now we can do nth child and what the nth child does is it finds all check boxes like or all valid elements that match this which there are two but we just want this first one so it's going to do the first one if we wanted the second one we could get the second one but we just want the first one So let's set that to a variable. Checkbox one. All right, so let's just verify that it's not selected first. So we can do expect checkbox one is selected to be false. This is another chai thing. You can just do that to be false, or you could do to be false as well. We'll just do false. So essentially, we, we are assuming it's not selected. So that should pass. Now let's let's click it. Yeah. So to check the checkbox, all we have to do is click it. If it's already clicked. It's just going to unclick it. So now let's just expect that one is selected to be true. Let's just do a browser.pause so we can see it. All right. It's back in. I created an inputs file. Let's run that. Oh, I never specified a URL. And let's let's just grab this. Ah. Try that again. All right. So we have that. So now let's try running it. Oh, and see how it clicked it real fast. So we can actually unclick it then too. Let's just let's just do that. So we just all we do is click again. So let's just put this down to two seconds to make it a little bit faster. All right, so it's gonna click it, unclick it, and boom. So that's how you deal with checkboxes. Basically, you need just it's just click and is selected. So now let's go to drop downs. Dropdowns has a special method called select by visible text, which we will use. So let's, let's go to drop down here and let's copy this link. 
just do to open the page. And so what we can do is to select the drop down, we need to select it by the text that we see. So here's option two. So let's select it by option two. Well, first we need to find, find the selector on this drop down. All right, it's gonna be drop down here. So we can do that. Let's do so we can do select by visible text. And we want to use option two. Option two. Let's do that. Let's pause it so we can see. Let me comment this out. Load the page and see it's option two now. Perfect. So that's how you select uh, select boxes or drop downs is select by visible text. Now, if we want to get the value of that drop down, so since we set it to option two, the value should equal two here. So let's let's verify that. Let's do expect drop down dot get value. To be uh, to equal equal two. It's actually since it's returning from the DOM, it's probably going to be a string. So let's do two. And let's see if that passes. I left the pause in there. Wait five seconds. Perfect. So that is the value. So let's just make it up. Let's, let's console it just so we can see it a little bit better to see that it actually does work. Console is not a function. I gotta do console.log. All right, two right here, if you look in the standard output here. Two, perfect. So we've got drop downs taken care of. The next thing, let's go over text inputs. We can do that, let's remove that. Let's find the text input. Let's use our form authentication that we did before. So here's a username. And what do we want to do with this? Let's just add a value to username. So we can get it by the name is equal to username attribute. So let's add a value of foo. What add value does, it adds, it adds to the input. So essentially, if there's already input in that text box, it will add to it. So let's just verify that this does work. Oh, I'm using the wrong page. We need to change our URL to login. So it adds it to foo. Good. So let's see what happens if we call add value again and add it a bar. So let's do a pause on that. Again, you don't want to use pauses on your applications at all. This is merely I'm using pauses to just show things off so that the, the screen doesn't go away so fast and it's easier for you guys to see. Let's do four seconds. And we should see it at first enter foo, and then it will enter bar. So it's wait, it should enter bar. And there we go. So that's how add value works on, on a text input. 
Now, what if we did that and we wanted to, what if we didn't want to add to the value of the input? We just wanted to clear out what's in there and, and replace it with a completely new value. So we can just do set value. What set value does is it clears the value first and then we'll add whatever value you add in there. So let's do some new value. So let's do browser.pause. And again, you see I have multiple elements of username. This isn't best practice, just merely an example. Later on, you'll see that all these will be stored in page objects, but you don't need to worry about that now. So now let's, it should add value of foo, add value of bar, and then we're gonna set the value which is gonna replace foo and bar. So let's try that out. So it sets foo bar. Now it replaces foo bar with everything. So that's the difference between add value and set value. All right, so let's, let's get the value. To get the value, we can just do, let's log it out, answer.log. Username, get value. So we can call get value. And now we should see the value show up down in the output down here. some new value. So yeah, so we got the, the value by some new value. Right. And how set value works is it clears the value, but maybe you want to just clear the value, but you don't want to actually set a value. So what we could do is we can call clear value. Dot clear value. And this what this will do is just clear out the input. So now it'll set all of that and then some new value will be erased. So let's try that now. There you go. So now it, it set it set those values and now it cleared them. So that is how to work with the most common forms, form elements that are out there.